Okay, this one goes down in history as the most false starts. This is the fourth time we've attempted to start this episode off. I've crashed and burned within the first 30 seconds the three previous times. The fourth time is a charm. I don't know. See, maybe instead of just trying to improvise shit at the opening, maybe I should just shut the fuck up. And then I wouldn't crash and burn. Spock, where's my ship? You can scream and shout with all your might. Oh, you can scream, shout, whine, cry, snivel, piss, and moan. Dig in your heels and hold on tight. You can shove your opinion up your ass. That way Obama's cock has something to keep it company. Don't forget the ever-present, the most likely third possibility. You are wrong, and I am right. That's probably how it's going to go down, especially since today I have a martini. It's 1 p.m. on a Sunday. Nice wintry day here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins. Winter is starting to arrive, despite global warming making everything worse. And so here we are, recording Stating the Obvious podcast at the weapons platform from which I launched the cruise missile of my intellect that holds the on and destroys the motherfucking statist all around the world. God damn it, I fucking hate you, statist. And occasionally, there are survivors, even though it's a nuclear-tipped cruise missile. When there are survivors, they glow in the dark, because we know radiation makes people glow in the dark. We all learned that from watching television, because of course most of you out there got your education on science from watching Star Trek. Speaking of Star Trek, I'm going to do an upcoming episode where I'm going to talk about Star Trek. I have recently watched a number of fan-produced Star Trek shows, movies, series, via the YouTubes, that are all based on the original series, because as longtime listeners know, I love the original Star Trek. Every Star Trek that came after it was so fucking statist. I mean, the original Star Trek is statist. Yes, there's lots of statism there. But Captain Kirk, you know, he recognized that there are times when you tell the statism to go fuck itself, right? Every time Kirk would disobey the prime directive, that's when you see anarcho-capitalism happening. That's when you see a man saying, this is the right thing to do, I'm going to fucking do it, and damn the consequences, because it's the right thing to do. The original Star Trek, I love original Star Trek. And there are some hot chicks in there. So anyhow, I'm going to do an upcoming series, upcoming, I can't talk, upcoming podcast. It's not going to be a series. It's only going to be, I know I said it's going to be one podcast that turns into five. It's only going to be one podcast where I want to talk about some of the Star Trek fan fiction movies that I have watched and suggest that you watch them and talk about the hot chicks that are in some of them and also talk about some of them are really fucking good. I'm, I mean, I've seen some impressive shit. I am very impressed with some of the work these folks have done. But today, however, the great one himself is here to feel... I feel good. I feel vindicated. So I am the great one himself. I am the founder of the Cynical Libertarian Society. I've been on the internet since 1999. I've been podcasting for 10 fucking years. November next month is my 11th year anniversary of podcasting. I know you just started a podcast. And my podcast is on episode 7. Uh, shut up. Podcasting for 11 motherfucking years. Go fuck yourself. In the control room is the lovely and adorable Randy. You can find us on the interwebs at cynlibsoc.com. You can find me on the Twitterverse at cynlibsoc. Also, of course, on the YouTubes. Again, you, the YouTubes has stopped the blocking my Stating the Obvious podcast because of the inclusion of David Gilmore's song, You Know I'm Right, off his 1984 album About Face. It's the theme song for Stating the Obvious because it's a song he wrote about me. And I should be able to use it if I want to. Mm. And I have a martini in my hand. So you will hear pauses every now and then as I partake of the martini. The gin martini is, of course, the official drink of the Cynical Libertarian Society. 
And remember, martinis, they're not just for breakfast anymore. Have them any time of the day. I am here today to feel good about myself because we all know it's about feelings, right? Feelings, nothing more than feelings. There's feelings in the air, there's feelings everywhere. Let's talk about my feelings. Nothing's more important than my feelings. Logic is anathema to me. Let's just talk about my feelings. And we'll call that diversity. Feelings. See, I feel good. You know why I feel good? I feel good because of a thing called confirmation bias. Now, I understand confirmation bias and I understand the dangers of confirmation bias. You don't because you're a statist. You're a fucking dumbass. You're an idiot. Natural selection says you should be dead, but the state keeps you alive because the state needs you. I have a lot of confirmation bias going on right now because here's why. Let me pull this shit up. I have some I have I actually have notes. We're going to see how that goes. We all know how it goes when I have notes. On what day was it? October the 1st. Aaron Clary, Captain Capitalism, captaincapitalism.blogspot.com, again, is one of the blogs that I recommend you should be... Obviously, the most important website in existence is my website. But once, you, once you've listened to my podcast, the next place you should go on the internet is captaincapitalism.blogspot.com. The other two websites I really recommend you check in with often are, of course, Chateau Hartis and Return of Kings. Those three websites, well, four if you include mine, those four websites right there are really everything you need. So anyway, Captain Capitalism published a post on the 1st of October, which is entitled, Blame Women Disproportionately for the Collapse of Western Civilization. And I read this, and the entire time I had a fucking heart on, because I'm, I'm human, just like anybody else. And I have the same fallacies that all humans do, except, of course, for Obama, because we all know that Obama is actually a god. Obama is like the ancient ruler's in China. He actually had a mandate from heaven. He has a mandate from heaven. Obama is the second coming of Jesus, unless of course you're a Jew, in which case he's the first coming of Jesus because the original Jesus was not actually the son of God. But Obama, he's different from everybody else. He is blessed by the Lord and Savior in the sky, the invisible man who lives up there who created the world and everything. So, of course, Obama doesn't have confirmation bias because he's a god, a god on earth. He's the son of God. But all the rest of us have confirmation bias. And if you know you have confirmation bias, you can look out for it. Now, of course, those of you who are sheeple, you you can't even spell confirmation bias, much less recognize what it is. So you're just dumb fucks that natural selection says should be dead, but Obama keeps you alive. So you vote for him because Obama knows that nobody with more than seven brain cells could possibly believe anything that comes out of his mouth. I need another drink of martini. Hold on. Ah, it's glorious. Wonderful. Anyhow, back to my ego. Because if there's anything more important on the planet Earth than my ego, I want it found and shot. Bonus points to you if you recognize where I stole that modified quote from. The captain wrote this post. I read this the whole time I had a heart on because... When you go and read this post, go read this post. Right now it's linked in the show notes. If you're listening to the cast... If you didn't follow the instructions in the show notes and read the post before you started listening to my podcast, then fucking stop right now. Go read the post. Come back. Finish listening. Those of you who have been listening to me for some odd years will read the captain's post and you will hear and hear pretty much everything I've been saying. I have said before, the problem with democracy, other than it's democracy, is that just 
everybody's allowed to vote. And of course, this is how we got where we are. We've all heard the quote, whenever people can find out they can vote other people's money to themselves, they're going to do it. So anyhow, I read the captain's post and he articulates all this very well. He presents some data, some figures, and of course, the chart. What I'm calling, what I just call it, the chart. Look, my friends, at the chart. I'm gonna put the chart in my show notes also. Find the fucking chart. Where's the goddamn chart? Randy, why am I not more organized? Oh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> organized me, there's a good one. The chart. I mean, here it is. You can see government spending, per capita state expenditure, and per capita state revenue. You can see expenditures going down, and then women get to vote, and you can see expenditures going up. Now, I'm reading this post by the captain. I'm going, God damn it, this is pretty much everything I've been saying. And it feels good to know that somebody who is actually an economist, somebody who understands this shit, somebody who has common sense and intelligence and is articulate, it feels good when I read this and he agrees with everything that I've been saying, which is not saying that he stole this from me or some shit like that. I mean, great minds think alike. People. The point is that he has independently come to the same conclusions that I have come to. That's the part that stokes my little fucking ego. <laughs> Not that my ego is little, as we all know. All right. Looking at my notes, trying to figure out how I even want to dive into this. Yes. I have said this. What? Sorry. I will talk into the microphone. I was turning around to get my martini, and Randy just yells at me. Talk it to the microphone. It's okay. It's what I pay her the big bucks for. I don't actually pay her, but she gets to enjoy my presence. That's the ego. Anyway, okay, look, folks. You've heard it here before. Men and women are different. I know that's offensive. I don't care. Men, manly men, not feminized men, and this, of course, is a big part of the problem. The state... Okay, let's review this quickly. If you are not a victim or a victimizer or a child, you don't serve a purpose for the state. The state needs people to be childish, needs them to be incompetent, it needs them to be victims, or of course it needs them to be victimizers. Remember, the state, as I did an entire series of podcasts about this, the state wants women to be raped. A woman who has been raped needs the state. If you're a woman and you get raped, you need the state to find the rapist, you need the state to protect you, you need the state to provide you with counseling, you need the state to provide you with an abortion if you got pregnant, you need all of this stuff from the state. Now, of course, in order for a woman to get raped, you have to have a rapist. Well, actually, not anymore. Now women can actually get raped simply by going out in public and having other people look at them. Like if light rays, waves of light, bounce off of a woman's skin and then they travel and they hit the eye of a man and then they hit his eye and his eye interprets the light wave and in his brain, his neurons fire off and he sees an image of the woman. That is actually rape now in some places. So you don't necessarily need a rapist in the sense that we normally think of a rapist. You just need another person. The point is you need another person to be a victimizer. You need a person to be the rapist. So from the perspective of the state, the state wants everybody to be a victim and thus need the state. A victimizer who of course creates victims that need the state. And the other good thing about victimizers is that victimizers need the state, I've gone through all this before, because the rapist needs the state to protect the rapist from the consequences of his actions. And of course I need to drink a martini. And then the state wants people to be children because children by definition are helpless, cannot provide for themselves, need someone to provide for them. That's why we have all of these adult children. All right, men, true men, and a small number of women who by merit actually accomplish things, do not fall into any of these categories. So the people who are not victims, 
victimizers or children, those people will vote for independence and responsibility because independence, freedom, whatever you want to call it, and responsibility go hand in hand. This is a This is a key understanding of anarcho-capitalism that a lot of people don't get. Also in the near future I'm going to be talking about, I've warned you in the past when I called Ben Stone a feminist and I said that the feminists were going to start moving into the anarcho-capitalist sphere, if I can fucking learn to talk. And soon the, the pedophiles will be coming to integrate themselves into the anarcho-capitalist sphere because a lot of people, they see anarcho-capitalism and what they see is a philosophy that says you can do anything you want to do. Which is partially true. Anarcho-capitalism does say you can do anything you want to do. The part they leave out, the part they don't understand because their tiny little statist brains are not smart enough to understand it, is this. The part they don't understand is you can do anything you want to do as long as you're willing to accept responsibility for the consequences of what you do. So, independent, self-actualized, successful, responsible people, which is mostly, which is a group, which is first of all very small, and this group also mostly consists of men, but there are some women in there. This group of people will vote for less government, less government spending. This is, of course, relative, and yes, in anarcho-capitalism, there is no government, there is no voting, but I'm dealing in the real world here. I'm not dealing, you know, in the, the anarcho-capitalist masturbatory fantasy that people like Ben Stone live in, where it's like, well, when the, when the market demands freedom, the government will have to give us freedom. I'm whacking off right now into my microphone. No, no. I, there, ben Stone said a lot of good stuff in the past before he turned into a feminist. But no, there will never be a market demand for freedom. The market demand for freedom in the United States will never fucking happen. Randy, I sure I'm glad I have notes because I'm nowhere near them right now. I'm just going. All right. Why will there never be? I'm going to come back around to Aaron Clary's article and the thing that, because I said in the title, he's 95% right or he's 5%, whatever. He, he almost makes it all the way to what I think is the right conclusion, which I've said, I've said all this before. That's why when I read it, I was like, oh my God, Aaron, you're so close. Oh, you're so close. By the way, just for anybody who's new, just a Captain Capitalism and Aaron Clary, it's the same guy. So if you're, I'm going to switch back and forth. So just so you know. All right, what the fuck was I talking about? Oh yeah, I was talking about my ego. <laughs> I should just. Hey Randy, we should rename the podcast. We should just call it My Ego. <laughs> my ego and drinking martinis. Hmm. Okay, the fuck was I talking about? Jesus Christ, my brain hurts. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm okay, good. I I can I can go at this. Here come the here come the popo. <laughs> you probably can't hear it. There's a police siren going. All right, merit, merit, merit. There's a small group of people that produce shit. Oh, yes, thank you. I was going to talk about the the, the, the anarcho-capitalists who are masturbating to the oncoming anarchy, civil, which is coming. No, okay, no, it's not coming. Here's why. I'm spilling martini on the floor. Lick it up. Sniff the glove. All right. <laughs> All right, focus. Here is why an anarcho-capitalist society is not going to happen. Here's why not even a rollback of our current level of statism 
is going to happen. Part of the reason is yes, because people who should not be voting are voting and democracy and all that other stuff. But even with a democracy, if you had a population that was actually going towards freedom, as a lot of these weird anarcho-capitalists say, you know, I hear these people like Ben Stone, I keep harping on him, I know, and I actually haven't listened to his podcast in a long time because after he became a feminist, I stopped listening to him because I wasn't going to put up with that shit. But you know, he always used to say, well, we're moving more towards freedom, people are becoming more interested in freedom, and yada. they're not. There's now talk about confirmation bias, blinding people to reality. Now here's this. This is a perfect example of the danger of confirmation bias. So these anarcho-capitalists, they go like to the Free State Project gathering or whatever, and they see a couple of thousand people who are interested in less government. And they think that this translates into some sort of nationwide movement. And it doesn't. It doesn't. This is a tiny, tiny percentage of the population and will always be. The 99% are always going to want more government. They are always going to want more government. Look at the right wing and the left wing, the, the most freedom loving aspect aspects of the right and the left that have emerged via grassroots organization or whatever bullshit you want to call it. The Tea Party and the Occupy Wall Street. I mean, both of those movements, I hate the word, as we all know, I hate the word movement. It sounds like we're taking a shit together. Both of those emergences revolved around government. They claim, well, we're looking for more freedom, we want more liberty, blah, blah, blah. But it's all freedom and liberty through voting for these politicians who are going to pass the right kind of laws, right? There's the right kind of laws that can give you freedom. You can't get freedom through laws. Again, homosexuals, you don't have the freedom to get married. You have permission to get married. The idea that getting permission from the government to get married has somehow given you more freedom is an illustration of why democracy is a failure because people that fucking dumb should not be making political, social, economic decisions. Okay, so to come back to the masturbatory fantasies of the anarcho-capitalist, the reason we're never going to tread towards less statism is because each generation is born into a certain level of statism. And that's sort of their baseline. And the average person is completely, they're incapable. They are incapable of imagining more a, a life of more freedom than what they started with. Here's the example of this that I want to give you. I've told this story before, I'll tell it again. One of the models I've worked with, she is 17 years old, 16 at the time, and we were talking and somehow we got to airports and TSA and I was explaining to her that there was a time when you could just go to an airport and just you just walk into the airport and there's where the the thing where whatever they call it where you board the aircraft right the boarding terminal you just walk into the boarding terminal you didn't need a ticket in many airports you could actually just walk right outside onto the tarmac you could be standing there taking pictures of the airplanes and stuff and she just could not conceive that this was possible because she was born into a world where the only way you can get into the boarding tarmac of an airport is to have a TSA agent touch your body and feel you up. You, you, she's never known a world where the TSA does not exist. And so from her perspective, the TSA searching your luggage and putting you through an x-ray and touching your body, that's the norm. That is her baseline for freedom. 
So when they say, well, the TSA now, you actually have to strip down to your underwear, to her, it's not going to be that big of a deal. It's like, well, we already have to do all this other stuff. What's a little bit more? And so there's going to always be this gradual increasing of statism, of regulation, of control. And it's not going to roll back. It's not because there are some people out there who, yes, can conceive of a world without the TSA. There are some people out there who can conceive of a world where you don't have to get permission from the government to get married. But the 99% will never, never be able to conceive of the idea that two or more people can get married without getting permission from the government. They are sim Try it sometimes. Say to one of your statist friends or your statist enemies the idea of getting married without going to the government for permission and just watch as their tiny little fucking brain just melts down. They have no idea that this can happen. It's completely beyond their comprehension. And in this sense, the 99% are the stereotypical female voters. Women want to be dominated. Women want to have control. Women want to behave like children. Women want to be children. I've gone through all that before. The selfies taken from up above. Their text speaking, just the way they dress, the way they behave. They're constantly trying to present themselves as children. The vast majority of the people in our society are children. They are incapable of conceiving of a world with less government control, less government regulation, less government spending because they want to be taken care of. Randy, how are you? Sh oh God. All right. I've got to get focused here. I'm running out of time. All right. The 1%, the logical, the rational, the self-sufficient, the responsible, they vote with logic. The 99% who cannot conceive of freedom, who will never be able to conceive of responsibility, who do not want responsibility, who are driven by their emotions, their base needs, their base desires. I want free abortion. You know, I want, what, what the fuck do people, I want gun control because guns scare me. I want diversity and tolerance because diversity and tolerance make me feel good. All of this stuff, this is the 99%. They are always going to vote for more government spending, more socialism, more laws, more regulations. And thus we do have, as the captain points out in his blog post, the collapse of Western civilization. To briefly recap what he said, Western civilization was created by a bunch of men, trying mostly men, yes, there were some women, blah, 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 herstory and all this other shit. There were some, mostly men trying to do great things, accomplish great things, being responsible, being industrious. But then all the parasites start voting. And of course, parasites are going to do what parasites are going to do, which is to suck blood from the host and to act based upon their emotional needs as opposed to any kind of actual understanding of economics or math. Topping on to this, that the average American, and I always say the, well, I always say the most environmentally destructive on the animal on the planet Earth is the human female, which is true, but then you can add most human males to that. But you look at all the knickknacks and the shit and the clothing and the 100 pairs of shoes and all the makeup and all the other shit. I saw something in the, in the fucking... I, I'm, no, no digressing. Thank you. <laughs> ah. Good job, Randy. Yes, let's not digress. God, I have so much material coming up. All right, anyway. 
Let me read part of Aaron Cleary's post to you. Here we go. Quote, your average, oh, ah, Aaron, you have a typo. Ha! Says, you average female voter. It should be your average female voter. Proofreading. I'll send you a bill for that. Just kidding, man. Just kidding. Dude, chill the fuck out, Aaron. I'm just kidding. All right. Typo. Your average female voter is a byproduct of her evolution, environment, genetics, and upbringing. And therefore, your average female voter is stuck in stage one thinking, where she, number one, wants to solve a problem, but number two, doesn't know how much it will cost, but number three, doesn't care because she never looked at the budget anyway, because number four, she thinks the government has unlimited money, because number five, she really doesn't know the difference between a million and a trillion. So number six, votes for more government spending anyway. And his list there, I think, is completely correct. I think this, but this is where the emotions come in. Another aspect of the same result is that the female voter, she sees a problem and she has an emotional response. It's like, oh, there's, there's homeless children. Oh, I'm having an emotional response. I want to help the homeless children. And she doesn't understand why the children are homeless. She doesn't understand, she'll see like some statistics about how many homeless children there are, right? And she doesn't, or, or a better, even better example is the studies about how many children are hungry. There's so many hungry children. Yeah, I saw this, I saw this statistic once about how many gazillions of billions of children every night go to bed hungry. And I, you know, and a woman sees this, and because it's an emotional response with no logic, she's like, "Oh my God, all these children are starving. We have to do something." And she doesn't understand the mechanism of where the hungry children come from. She doesn't understand the mechanism of where the money comes from or how the problem can actually be solved. She also doesn't understand the mechanism of the actual statistics, right? When you say that there are children going to sleep at night hungry, I mean, so what? I go to sleep at night hungry often. I, my kitchen's full of food. There's a restaurant around the corner. I have money in the bank. I mean, everybody goes to bed hungry sometimes. This is not the end of civilization. But again, a woman just sees statistics. It's like, oh my God, there's hungry children. Something must be done. She doesn't understand the root cause. She doesn't understand how the statistics were gathered. She doesn't understand the methodology or what they mean. She can't see through the bullshit. She doesn't understand money. She doesn't understand math. She, it's just pure fucking emotion. And so a shorter version of what Aaron wrote here is that would be this. Therefore, your average female voter is stuck in stage one thinking where she wants to solve a problem Two, because she has an emotional reaction to it and therefore votes for more government spending. To continue reading from Aaron's post, quote, the problem is she literally does not realize that money just doesn't come from poof out of nowhere. And she certainly does not understand how the government just printing off more money would result in hyperinflation. Thus, in a very naive and childlike way, who is it that's been saying for how long now that women are essentially children and they take great pride in being children? That would be me. Thus, in a very naive and childlike way, she will do what is logical to a seven-year-old. Vote for more government money, consequently voting the country that inch further into tyranny and enslaving all of us that might and oh, and enslaving all of us that microsecond more in taxes. I can't read unless I have a martini in my hand. So yes. And what have I said over and over and over again? The 99% have the same worldview they had when they were eight years old. They do. I've been a Republican all my life. I've been a Democrat all my life. I've been a Christian all my life. I've been an atheist all my life. 
Whenever you hear somebody telling you they've had the same ideology all of their life, they're telling you that they possess the world view of an eight-year-old child. And again, these people are allowed to vote. Thus, the slouching towards the decline by Aaron Cleary's book, Enjoy the Decline. It will help you because again, the anar- for all of you fucking anarcho-capitalists out there who think there's hope, guys, I, I, I'm... You've got to wake the fuck up and smell the coffee. Again, this is why this is called the cynical libertarian society, even though it's I'm an anarcho-capitalist, not a libertarian. Libertarians are just republic, blah, blah, blah. You've heard all that before. I did a whole fucking series of podcasts on it, how Republicans trying to call themselves libertarians. Guys, the anarcho-capitalist revolution, it's not fucking coming. It's not coming until the United States declines so fucking far that the 99% is truly that they are eliminated by natural selection. Until 90% of the population in the United States is dead, by they starve to death, by disease, by whatever it is, that is what it's going to take for the anarcho-capitalist evolution to happen and take place, for us to move from a status society into a free society that does not have a state, does not have a government, does not have people asking permission to get married, does not have taxes. It is not going to happen until 90% of the population is dead. So just stop jacking off about how the fucking people want freedom and there's a freedom movement. And oh, look, look, more and more people are getting interested in freedom and libertarianism. No, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. More and more people who are fucking incredibly stupid and have the worldview of eight-year-olds are voting. That's what's happening. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. I did this. I'm looking at my notes. Yep, there'll be none of this. Yep, I already talked about that. God, I'm doing pretty good here. Randy, how are we on time? Lay it on me, baby. Yeah? Three. No shit. All right. I am doing pretty good. All right. I can, I can get this in one episode. I still haven't got to the part where I think Aaron Cleary stopped short. I'm, I'm getting there. Just hold on to your fucking panties. Okay. Here's what the captain writes, talking about if you want to vote, blah, blah, blah. Quote, very simply, if you want to vote, you need to have paid taxes. If you collect a government check, no. If you're on EBT, no. Are you on TANF? No. Disability? No. Social security? No. Housing assistance? No attending a state university and getting a subsidy from the taxpayer? No. You must be a contributing member of this society paying into the government to have a say in how the country is run. You must not be a parasite collecting a government check making you, by definition, a ward on the state. This discriminates against no one, but ensures that those who are paying for the government are the ones determining how it is managed. And it is thus far in my economist mind of thinking the best way to award the right to vote." Unquote. Now, where have you heard all that before? Where have you heard that parasites should not be allowed to vote? Right here, man. Right here. And when I read somebody as intelligent as the captain agreeing with me makes my dick hard. Makes me just want to fucking grab it and just just fucking whack off. Just like whenever you status think about the roads, the way you whack off. So let's talk about the roads. Let's talk about finally where the part that Aaron forgot. Because you see, Mr. Clary is correct. All of these people should not be voting. People getting a government check. People on EBT. People on TANF. Whatever the fuck that is. I don't even know. Disability. Yeah. Social security. Yeah. You're old. You're retired. You're getting your social security check. No. You, you don't get to vote. 
As soon as that social security check comes in, no more voting for you. No more voting. Housing assistance, yeah, no voting. State university, yeah, you're going to a state university, no voting. As far as I'm concerned, if you're getting a government loan to go to a state university or a private university, if you're getting a loan from the government for your education, no voting. No voting for you. But you see, there's another parasite welfare class that Mr. Clary did not mention. This would be the corporations. Now, as we all know, because we are smarter than the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court, by the way, is a product of the government, which came from democracy. The Supreme Court believes that corporations are people. Now, you and I are smarter than this. We recognize that corporations are not people. Corporations are legal fictions. So when I say that the corporations should not be allowed to vote, what exactly do I mean by this? Well, thank you for asking. In this sense, when I say corporations, I mean the CEO, the board of directors. Now, wait, wait, now you're really about to get pissed off. The shareholders and the employees. Again, everything I'm about to say, I have said this years ago on Stating the Obvious. You may have heard all this before. Who is it that should not be allowed to vote? Well, anyone who works for a corporation that has received a government bailout. Wells Fargo. Now, now you're saying, but, but great one. You, you, but you, you can't say the employees of Wells Fargo shouldn't be allowed to vote. Well, yeah, I can say that. I just fucking did. The employee from CEO, from CEO all the way down to janitor. If you work for a corporation, banking corporation, the automobile corporations, if you work in any capacity for a corporation that has received a government bailout, you are on welfare. You don't get to vote. No. No, you don't. I don't want to hear, no, you don't have a fucking right to vote. No, I understand you're just a janitor. It's not your fault the CEO did all that stupid shit and then the company needed, that's, I, that's not your fault. I don't give a shit. It is your fault. Number one, you could get another job because there's plenty of jobs, right? Obama is the president. The economy is fucking fixed. Everybody has jobs. And if you think people can't get jobs, then you're obviously racist. You probably hate children and homosexuals too. No, you can get another fucking job. You don't have to be a janitor at Wells Fargo. Are you responsible for the actions of the CEO of Wells Fargo? Yeah, you sure fucking are. You keep working there. You do what he tells you to do. You fucking punch in every day. You act like a fucking ant in the anthill. Because you're terrified of freedom and responsibility. Well, if you're going to work for a corporation that got bailed out, you don't get to vote. Number two, if you work, and yes, this includes the shareholders. If you're a shareholder and you're making money, from your shares in Wells Fargo, or even if you're losing money, it doesn't matter. You're a shareholder in Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo got bailed out by the government. Ooh, God, damn, you don't get to vote. Damn. Oh, burn. No, you're on welfare. You are a fucking welfare recipient. You are a fucking parasite. So understand, Aaron's criteria that people pay taxes is not enough. You can pay taxes and still be a parasite. This is the 5% short that Aaron comes up. Paying taxes is not enough by itself. The question isn't, because again, it's just because you pay taxes doesn't mean you're not a parasite. 
the true measure of responsibility. Again, this is this, and, and Aaron says it in his post too. This is all academic. I've right. It's this is all academic. This is just me fantasizing and jacking off into the microphone about a statist society the way I think it should be if you're going to have to have a state. This is actually something I want to do a podcast about is, you know, like Plato wrote The Republic, which was supposed to be sort of his idealized nation state. I would like to do a podcast about if we're going to have statism, this is how it should be. And this right here is part of how it should be. If we are going to have a statist society, and we are, then the ideal statist democracy would be one in which parasites are not allowed to vote. Number two, if you work in any capacity or if you are a shareholder in any corporation or company, I use the word corporation, but we can include company. Randy, where are we on time? Oh, fuck. All right. Thanks, honey. I'm going to make it. All right. If you work for a corporation that has any government contracts, you don't get to vote. Who builds the roads? Well, the government builds the roads. We know that. If there were no government, there'd be no roads. Do you work for a company that builds roads? Oh, government contract. You're a parasite. No voting for you. Hmm. Government contract. When we think about government contracts, what's the first thing that comes to mind? military industrial complex. Last time I checked, the only people that buy aircraft carriers, tanks, fighter jets would be the government. Oh, you work for a corporation that has military contracts? Oh, I, oh I'm so sorry. You're not allowed to vote today. If you'd like to quit your job, now you could come back. Unless, of course, you're on unemployment insurance. Then I'm going to, no, sorry, got to turn you down. But yeah, oh yeah, you work for McDonald's, Douglas. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, you work at Grumman. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. You just, you're not allowed to vote. Thanks for coming. Don't let the door hit you in your ass on the motherfucking way out. No. Now you're saying, oh, I work at McDonald's Douglas, but I, I work in the civilian aircraft division. No, no, nice try. Nice fucking try. No, uh-uh. Well, I work for this corporation, but, but we're, but, but, but we're, no, no, no. Your corporation is a subsidiary of this other corporation. Oh, let's see. Oh, oh, do, do you work for a corporation that got a government fund for advertising? I remember many, many years ago, reading that the government gave Coca-Cola a fat sum of money so they could advertise Coca-Cola in China. Oh, oh, the government gave your corporation money for advertising? Oh, I'm sorry. Welfare parasite. Boom. Sorry, don't let the door hit you in your ass on the way out. You don't get to vote. Thanks for coming. Go fuck yourself. Finally, Finally, do you work for a corporation that has government regulations to protect it, to protect it from competition? This The girl that I talked about some odd podcast ago that I was all excited about and I went out with her and she was awesome. So anyway, that's gone. That's over with. But she works in a field where the government regulates the prices. So no matter where you are in the United States doing what she does, it costs exactly the same. The government completely regulates the prices. There is no free market competition. Do you have a job where the government regulates the pricing? Oh, damn. You wanted to vote today? Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. There's a door right over there. Let me help you to the door, you cocksucking motherfucking parasite. Because I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, the government. Yeah, they regulate the prices in your industry. Oh, that's welfare. Oh, thanks for coming. Try again next year. Shove them out the fucking door.
So you see, you can pay taxes and still be a parasite. Now you're saying, but great one, great one. You, you can't, we can't have that. There would be almost nobody voting. Yeah. You know who would be left? You know who would be capable of voting? People who own small businesses or essentially we'll call it work for themselves. We've been down the show before. Nobody works for themselves. You always have to work for other people, right? You create value for other people, right? Aaron Clary, quote unquote, works for himself writing books and doing asshole consulting, assholeconsulting.com. But he works for other people. He creates value for other people who buy his books and buy his consulting services, right? So the only people voting would be people who work for themselves, quote unquote, people who own small businesses, but did not get small business loans from the government. Oh, you got a small business loan from the government? Oh, so sorry. You wanted to vote today? Oh, see ya. Oh, did you get a small business loan from Wells Fargo? Oh, you wanted to vote today? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Come back next year. Right? So the only people voting would be people who work for themselves, people who work for small businesses, or people who work for, or say, who own small businesses, or who work for small businesses. And yes, this would re reduce the voting population to what? 2% of the population? But this is the 2% that has truly been responsible, who is truly accountable for themselves, who is truly creating the real value that can be found in our society. And this is getting all the parasites, all the welfare parasites, right? Whether it's the ghetto mother with seven children by five baby daddies, or whether it's the banking corporations. There is no fucking difference between the two in their parasitism. Without the fucking government to keep them alive, Wells Fargo and the welfare mother would both be dead. I don't bother with the other side. I'm always right. Fuck you. And no, you should not be voting. Fuck you.